do not have government. We do not have government by the majority. We have government by the majority who participate. And I think that's uh, pretty poignant right now. And, and, and so your participation is, is so important. And so thank you for participating. And I have no idea if you're making faces at me or, or waving with one finger because it's very bright up here. So keep that in mind when, when these folks are talking. The only thing in life that is inevitable is change. And the changes that will take place in the next year will bring a new leadership. Um, it's a leadership that will face new challenges. It is our hope that after we elect this new leadership, that we will all work together for our collective betterment and overcome the diversity that is tearing us apart. The Rock Springs Chamber of Commerce would li also like to thank the City of Rock Springs for the use of this beautiful building. Chad Banks and Kenneth McCormick and Terry Nations from the URA, Bruce Pivick, Dylan Rohr, and Wild Four News, the amazing Chamber staff, and all the candidates running in so many races. And we would also like to particularly acknowledge and thank the spouses of all of the candidates who I think deserve at the very least a round of applause for all that they go through. So really quickly, the, uh, the rules of the evening are that we will begin the, the de this, this debate tonight with a three-minute introduction, and this will be true for both debates. We'll start with a three-minute introduction from each of the candidates, um, and, then, and then a two minutes to answer Tom's question. After that, there will be a, a one-minute rebuttal opportunity, and as many rebuttals as, as is necessary, and one-minute contention to respond to the rebuttal. And then we will wrap up the... Uh, this debate with a three-minute closing argument. If your name is used in an answer or, or a rebuttal or a contention, you may call for a point of order and be given one minute to defend your name. To ask for a rebuttal or point of order, simply raise your hand and uh, be acknowledged by Tom. And if you can't see him or if he can't see you, then just turn on your mic and ask for a rebuttal. And, <laughs> and he's not going to pay attention and Matt's already got a rebuttal. Okay, um, we, uh, just to let the audience know that the order of the speakers were drawn from a hat, and each round of questions will begin with the next candidate in line, and all will have the opportunity to begin a round. Now to introduce the names of the candidates running for mayor of Rock Springs in 2022. If you want to acknowledge yourselves, Matt Jackman. <laughs> Wally Johnson. Kathy Phillips, <laughs> Max Mickelson, <laughs> and David Rodakovich. Okay, once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching online. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the moderator of this evening's debates from Y04 News, Tom Ellis. Thank you, Rick. On behalf of the Rock Springs Chamber of Commerce, YO Radio, YO 4 News, and all of the candidates, we thank the people here at the Broadway Theater who came out tonight for this debate, and also those folks tuning in on our Facebook page at yo4news.com. I'm Tom Ellis, your moderator for tonight's debate. And with that, let's get things started with the three-minute opening statements. We'll start with uh, candidate Jackman. Thank you, Tom. Thank you everybody for coming tonight. It's so important for local political process. I don't think you realize how important your local politics mean to your everyday lives. Rick, thank you to the chamber for putting it on. Y04 News, thank you as well. I know this is costing you airtime. Grady, thank you for timing. I know if it's not something you're interested in, this is really exciting for you. So uh, with that, my family's been super involved in this campaign and they've been trying to find me an ideal campaign slogan. And my little brothers have really been pushing for the infamous 30 million view video that I'm sure this entire room has seen. And if you haven't, it's going to get played tonight, I'm sure, at some point, to, so everybody can see it. A little bit about me. I was born and raised in Rock Springs, lived here basically my whole life. I did leave and go to college like most people do and come back. I'm a local small business owner. I spent the last four years as a treasurer of the school board. I've been six, I spent six years on planning and zoning, two years as chairman. And currently, I'm the president of the local hospital foundation. Rock Springs has always been crucial to my family's life. It's been so important. And everybody asks me, why do you want to run? You've lived here forever. Your dad's never been involved. Why do you want to run? And I, I want to live here forever. I don't want to work forever. I don't want to be stuck or older. 
trying to make my hometown better. I want to retire here, and I want it to be the best place that I can when I'm ready to retire so I can enjoy it with my kids, my grandkids, and my family, and we can take care of it for a long time. Rock Springs is in a great situation. We have a solid foundation that people have been built on for a long time. I would love to see more. We've got the rocks in place. Now let's start building on top of that foundation and be stronger. I want to push those community partnerships. I want to see the school district and the city partner on big projects that bring economic development to Rock Springs, that get things people are excited about. Look at how excited all of you are here. Look at International Day and those free, free events that matter. At the end of the day, when I'm at City Hall, I'm going to have a tough time predicting what's going to come. Nobody could have predicted COVID four years ago. Nobody had any day that was going to happen. So every day I pledge to use the values, the Rock Springs core values that we all live and work for. I'm going to be dedicated to this city. I'm going to make my decisions with integrity, and I'm going to have courage when it matters. Tonight you're going to hear a lot of buzzwords about economic development and honesty and transparency, but remember what Rock Springs is about. Dedication, integrity, and courage. Thank you guys for coming. I hope you have fun tonight. Thank you, Matt. Candidate Johnson, three minutes. Thank you. Uh, I am very fortunate to have been born and raised in Rock Springs, Wyoming. I'm a graduate of Rock Springs High School and Utah State University. And when I graduated from Utah State, I went to work for U.S. Steel in the mining industry. And that, entire, that put me on the path for my entire career. I spent my career in mining, both domestically and internationally. I've been in mining with iron ore, in both in Wyoming and in South America. I was uh, with Allied Chemical at mining Trona. Coal, I was with NERCO and uh, Bridger Coal. I also worked in the aggregate business in Texas. I believe my education and experience is at least equal to the other four that are on this uh, dais. So I don't want to spend any more time relative to that, at, at least at this point in time. I want to move on to the issues that I think are important to you. The elephant in the room, and I want it known that I feel very strongly about this, and it's very important to me, and I will not waffle on it. I, I, I really honestly like, love chickens. I also like doves. I hate pigeons. I have to thank the prior, uh, or the current, I guess, uh, people running the, the city, the, both the city council and, and the mayor and the people that work for those people, for closing up the First Security Bank building because that was a penthouse for pigeons. And, uh, but that, that discussion, while I make fun of it, that discussion is pretty serious because I think that's one of the issues that needs to be addressed by the, the, by the people that on this, whoever ends up being a future mayor of Rock Springs. And here's why. The former commission that I worked with, we bought and renovated the first security, I mean the Rock Springs National Bank building. Uh, and the cost of that was a little bit short of six million dollars. It's my understanding that the renovation of the first security bank building will be somewhere near eight million dollars. I think, and I don't know exactly what all the plans for that building are, but I think it's one that if I'm elected, I'll surely uh, look into. I, I think that there are other issues that we need to talk about. They're very, very important. But at this point, I just say to you, I appreciate being here, uh, and I appreciate have been have the opportunity to be your county commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Wally. Candidate Phelps, three minutes. My name is Kathy Phelps. Um, I ran four years ago for a very short period of time because I wanted to make sure that no one was getting their hands on contracts and there'd be no conflict of interest. I was 
didn't run for a very long time. I wasn't not going to run again. But the city has a budget problem, and it's fixable, and this is what I do. So um, I'm a long-term resident of Rock Springs. I have to read from here. <laughs> I raised both of my daughters here. I love this city. I have a wonderful um, son-in-law who's a project manager and the chemical engineering. Both my daughters are in the healthcare field. I opened my tax accounting business 41 years ago. For the last 36 years, I have also specialized in financial and business consulting. One of the questions I get all the time is, how come no one's ever heard of me? And what that is, is my business has not been open to the general public for over 15 years. The business is thriving. You can only do so much. Yes, I will be hiring help so I can do mayor too. Um, so with the budget in mind, Everyone wants to spend, 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 but until we, I mean, the budget doesn't have to be finalized for the next year, but we have to know we have the money to spend, spend, spend. And yes, we should be and will be looking for state funds, other funds to pay for other projects. But as far as the city goes, we've got to watch our money. Um, budget balancing, money management are in my wheelhouse. It is a second nature to me. I don't have to think about a lot of it. So I think that that's where I outshine some of the other candidates. Um, we'll work with the city council without a problem to get the waste cut out. And that way, hopefully, we're not going to be costing any employees their jobs. There is still some waste I have seen. I've been going through some of the old budgets. So be working to bring in new businesses. I absolutely love small businesses. I was a small business twice. Absolutely love them. We don't look for new sources of revenue. Um, Contracts are going to start being awarded fairly. Don't want any more issues there. People will be listened to and they will be traded fairly. I will work to stop conflicts of interest in the city government. And I do believe in total transparency for the simple fact it is our money. It is not the mayor's money. It is not the city's money. It is your guys' money, which includes me too. But you have a right to know where that money is going to. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, my main thing is, is that if you vote differently, you're going to get the changes that I'm seeing people want. I'll quit. <laughs> I'm done. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Canada will mix and you have, uh, Mickelson, I'm sorry. It's all right. Three minutes. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would like to also thank, uh, Rick and the chamber, Bruce Pivik and Tom Ellis with Playoff Our News and all of you people here and... Uh, at home who've taken your Friday evening to do something that is crucially important but not probably as fun as the other activities you could choose to do. A little bit about myself. Uh, my mom's family came to Wyoming in the 1860s and settled in what is now Lincoln County and my dad's family started their American journey from Denmark here in Rock Springs. Uh, one of my great-great-great-great-grandpa's uh, brothers was an engineer in the Union Pacific. One was a foreman in the mines, and then my great-grandpa great went on to become a rancher, and I'm the first of five generations to be smart enough to come back. Uh, I've started a small business here that has grown to have almost 30 full-time employees. I've started my family here, and I have 20 years of serving our community and our state. Um, I deeply believe in the potential of the city of Rock Springs to be a vibrant and thriving community with the amenity and essential resources and services that we all want and need. Um, my ultimate goal, uh, should I be elected mayor, is to help move the city towards a place where when my children graduate from high school, which terrifyingly for the oldest is in five years, they look around and say, after college I'm coming back, so that my grandkids grow up here and get to experience what a remarkable community this is. In my time, whether it was serving as the vice chair of the State Board of Education or on our school board for the last 10 years, or any of the various other boards that I've served on, there have been all kinds of catastrophes and unprecedented events. Uh, I think unprecedented is really overused, given how many of them there are. Uh, and those have required some very difficult decisions, some very unpopular decisions, and I have consistently made the right choice for the right reasons, regardless of the personal cost, because that's your job when you're in, in those elected positions. Uh, so thank you all again, and uh, I look forward to hearing from everyone. Thank you. Max. <clears throat>
Candidate Rodonkovich, three Thank minutes. You. Thank you very much for having me here tonight. You know, my, my name is Dave Rodonkovich, and people have a hard time pronouncing my name, so please just refer to me as Dave. It's a lot easier for everybody to talk that way. I'm a native of Rock Springs, and I was born in the hospital on C Street. Everybody knows that pretty much. I met, m married my wife. We both worked at Mountain Fuel on D Street, which I have to remember the letters on the streets here, so excuse me. We both met there. We've been married for 39 years. We had two sons that both graduated from Rock Springs High School, and they married two beautiful women that all of them are here in Rock Springs and working. And I also have two granddaughters that are growing way too fast for me and make me feel really old, but they keep me busy. Actually, when I grew up on West Platte down on Muir Street, and Bitter Creek was my playground. I remember going down there, and every year the creek would flood, and it was amazing how bad it would flood. And I didn't know as a kid that Reliance was and the mine were putting their sewage down in the creek, and come springtime and the overflow of water, all the sewage went down the creek, and, which I didn't care when I was young, so we just played it no matter what happened. But that's how Bitter Creek got its name, and I'm not going to pronounce it for everybody. All the locals know what we all call it. But that's how it got its name, and it's never going to lose that name. After high school, I went to the University of Wyoming, where I studied civil engineering, but I wanted to be an architect, so I went to the University of Utah. And I was getting done before my senior year. Architects dropped their liability. I had a job offer. I was young and stupid, but I got called in May with a job offer when I graduated. In August, I got a call saying, okay, architects dropped your liability, so you're gonna, we can't hire you. Architect when hires a draftsman. And the pay went very good down to $11,000 in Jackson. And I said, oh. But anyway, I wanted to go to school. Then the college called me and said, well, we're going to close that, what I was taking. And I was dumb and stupid. So I left the University of Utah and came back down here and went to work for Mountain Fuel as a draftsman. And that's how I started my oil field career. And I did many jobs at Questar. And the last one was with contracts and insurance. I was responsible for contracts where it all the contractors had to come through me. I had to look at their financials, all their insurance, and negotiate all the contracts from Montana down to Arizona, over to Louisiana, up into Kansas. All the Questar E&P companies, which are, is all changed now, but it taught me that I had, I didn't know everything about the oil field, but I had to trust the other employees that did. I had to listen to them so that I knew how to qualify all the liability there. But when I decided to run for mayor, I really looked at all the rules from there, but you won't see a lot of my signs everywhere on every corner. I wanted my reputation and my everything to come out and be my sign that'll get me in there. But thank you very much for letting me be here tonight, and I'm pretty much done. My 10, minute, 10 seconds are over, so I've got, got to stop now, so thank you. Thank you, Dave. Rick, do you have a a statement from one of the candidates not able to, oh that was for the that's for the next one okay that's for the next one okay we've got got that mistake out of the way <laughs> okay now we will start with uh, questions for the candidates they will have two minutes to respond to the question and we will allow a minute for rebuttals and uh, another minute for contention first question goes to Matt Jackman what investment or investments do you see the city making in the next four years that could provide the greatest return and create stronger stability for our futures? Thank you, Tom. That's a great question that I'm glad everybody asked. Economic diversity and economic development is a crucial question that we've all been talking about in Sweetwater County. Rock Springs is limited in the ability to just write checks and invest in properties. Unfortunately, I wish I had a magic wand and could put $100 million in our coffers where I could completely finish a bank building, where I could finish the Bitter Creek project, where I could do an industrial connector road. Ideally, my three most important projects for the economic development of Rock Springs, Summit Drive, which is that road that goes behind Stagecoach Elementary on the master plan for a long time. That's been there to connect out north. That's the next phase of growth for Rock Springs. We all see it. It's already started. The next most important project is finishing that Bitter Creek project. I don't think we need the beautification. I don't think we need the sidewalk. I don't think we need an E. coli Creek walk. What we do need is to get downtown Rock Springs out of the floodplain. It makes it easier to develop. It makes those buildings easier to sell. The last most important project is finishing that first security bank building. In business school, we learn a lot about the draw of a single business and what it can do. 
a lot of us have been to Rock Springs. If you go down to Sandy, Utah, there's this little store somebody has heard of, probably called Ikea. Ten years ago, before Ikea, if you went down to Sandy, Utah, you saw a lot of sand. And you saw a lot of sagebrush and a lot of grass and a lot of horses and stuff. Now if you go down there, it is almost a bustling business center. Rock Springs needs that first security bank building downtown to be that core business, that thing that draws every resident in Rock Springs every single week downtown. With that, that building and that project, that's our IKEA. That is what's going to make downtown grow and flourish for those small businesses to keep sparking economic development. Thank you. So, Wally. One of the issues that's very important to that first security bank building is when it is completed, the, that, that building that will be uh, redone with public funds will compete with private enterprise. If you take what we did with the Rock Springs National Bank, the offices there are all occupied by county employees. And it's in Rock Springs to serve the people in Rock Springs. And, the, and public funds should never be used to compete with private enterprise. So, yeah. <clears throat> no, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Wally. That's a, that's a great comment. You're not wrong. Good news is we're not going to be competing with private enterprise. The building for full value will most likely go up for sale. It's not done yet. I don't know how that looks. It could be 20 years before it gets done. But if we have the ability, we want to do that right away. And no, we don't want to be competing with private businesses. But a key cornerstone of URA development that's been a cornerstone for all URAs around Wyoming is they take those older buildings and they develop them and they sell them. And that money goes to the next project. And that money goes to the next project. And it keeps rolling. That's how URAs around the state have worked. And that is kind of the goal of how our URA works. Our next question <clears throat> is for uh, Wally Johnson. The next mayor of Rock Springs and his city council will have a continued burden of dealing with long-term growth and optimum sustainability, sustainable revenue production. What resources or programs will you seek to assist you in your efforts to assure that Rock Springs has a vibrant future? Well, the first thing you need to understand what, what the economic engine is for the city of Rock Springs and in, in the county, and that is that 40% of the economy is oil and gas, 14% of it's trona, about 5% of it's coal and other minerals and 1% of it's ag. So the things that we need to do, and we, the commission previously, we did do that, we gotta be at the table when those issues are being discussed and that are affecting the oil and gas industry, that are affecting the Trona industry and affecting the, the Bridger power plant. If the Bridger power plant goes down, we're gonna lose something like 1,600 jobs. And that's going to do, if, it, if that goes down, it's going to be because of the regional haze that's so uh, important to the environmental group, groups that would like to see that power plant go down. You're going to see the effect of some of these power plants going down because you're going to see brownouts, not only in Wyoming, you'll see those throughout the nation because they're, de they're destroying the coal industry. Rock Springs was built on coal. It was king coal. My dad spent over 40 years in the underground coal mine. That's why I'm so interested in what's happening with the AML funding. I, I addressed that when I was a county commissioner uh, as it affects not only Rock Springs, but little towns like Reliance. We deserve to have that money spent in, in Wyoming and particularly in, in uh, Sweetwater County. I, will, I hopefully will be able to talk about that a little bit more. Yes, Matt. Uh, Wally, in the past, you talked a lot about the oil and gas industry and how important it is, and I agree. I mean, it's, it's crucial to our success, but you also talked about that regional haze. As a county commissioner, you voted against economic development opportunities that would have reduced that regional haze. Are you changing your mind on that when you? Uh, Matt, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. 
<clears throat> I have spent so much time when I was a commissioner uh, relative to regional hail. So let me tell you a little bit about regional haze and the effect of that. I was in the Soviet Union, and it was the Soviet Union when I was there. I was in Russia, uh, the Ukraine, and Siberia. While I was in Siberia in a place called Novokuznetsk, a heavily industrialized area in the Siberia, uh, this young Soviet engineer was telling me about uh, uh, the, the, how well that area was doing with power plants, steel, steel mills, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm going to run out of time, so I'm going to cut to the chase on this. But the air quality there was horrible, absolutely horrible. So I asked him about the air quality. He says something I'll never forget. It's very difficult to worry about the air you're breathing when your stomach is empty. That's what we're faced with when we talk about the air and what it's going to do to the industries. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Next question is for Kathy Phelps. What three steps would you take to strengthen the office of mayor and the city council, and how will these steps put Rock Springs on a firmer footing? Three steps. <clears throat> One is definitely work well with the council. I've been talking with them. Um, we need to have the, con the council. Everyone needs to have their opinion and all the opinions get pulled together to see what is going to be the best for the residents and not necessarily what they want. Um, conflict of interest has got to go. No more favors, no more anything going on like that. We need our citizens to know that we are doing the best, clean, honest work that we can do for them. Um, oops, losing it here. And Tom, I need a question again. You want three? <laughs> yeah, we were. We, to, what what three steps would you take to strengthen the office of mayor and the city council? And how will these steps put Rock Springs on firmer footing? Okay, so a third step. Um, on that, we just. Not real sure. Um, I think once the city council's doing well with that, then we need to be dealing with our other people. And I need I need the general population to know that we will be open. And I do want to do uh, a seminar, just a small one, to teach people how to do presentations to the council so that they can understand, make it easier on the council, and they understand exactly what they're asking for. So make it more user-friendly, I guess. I'm not sure if that's answering. <laughs> Buttel. Okay, next question is for Max Mickelson. Diversification has been talked about for years in Sweetwater County as a necessary avenue for growing our economy. If you were approached by someone with a proposal to improve infrastructure and create new revenue sources, how would you evaluate whether or not the project was worth looking into? Uh, <clears throat> that's a great question, but I, I feel like it's kind of a softball question. Uh, just based on the team that exists at the city now, we have absolutely phenomenal employees who have, through some very difficult times, provided our citizens with both the essential and amenity services that they want and need. Um, I love ideas and I, one of my core tenets is increasing citizen engagement. So if there's somebody out there, and I know there is, who is significantly smarter than me and can bring a proposal forward, then we have a team of professionals to evaluate that and bring it to the council and the mayor for us to act on or, or not. Thank you. Rebuttal? Okay. Dave Rudakovich, the next question is yours. Every candidate on this stage could be a good mayor of Rock Springs. Who is the most qualified to bring, handle the challenges and the position of mayor, and how will you pivot most effectively when unseen problems arise? First thing you did, I did was I went to every city supervisor to find out what their problems were. Um, they have a lot of problems. They got cut drastically. They have a zero budget. So how to get, I can't say, I like everybody on mayor for right now, so I'm not going to say anything about that. But the city's been cut to the bone. There's no more money anywhere, so the mayor has to be able to think outside the box. He can't count on all the stuff that they had before, oil and gas, 
Right now, the city operates off the sales tax budget. 65% of their budget is from sales tax. And the state controls that. The city does not control it. The mayor's just got to think outside the box, try to come up with better ideas to do. We have a lot of empty buildings around here. We've got to get companies in here. To get It's like Sissy Cam. They are also a glass manufacturer. I contacted them. Of course, they didn't call me back or email me. I want them to move into the Halliburton building. We need to get a full-time company here making a lot of money, putting, hiring people for a good amount of money to get a good infrastructure of the city. And that's the only way we're going to get more money for the city, period. Go. Rebuttal. Yeah, Kathy. Okay. Um, it's my understanding that the Halliburton building's going to the new gun manufacturing company. No. That was what the county told me. SEDC. Going to gum manufacturing. Halliburton still empty. Oh, I was told Halliburton. Sorry. Only. <clears throat> I think we all need to understand that uh, the the city's not in good shape. We're in the middle of a recession. I know what the county has done, and we started it two years ago. What's what has the current administration done relative to reduce the cost and increase the income of? of the Rock, city of Rock Springs. I know the answer to that. They're, they've done nothing because they're still reaching into the reserves. This budget year, they, they, they reached in there for about $4 million. <clears throat> and if, you'd, if you would have listened to what was uh, done with the commissioners the other day, they were, they were discussing how much money they should, have, should be taking and leaving in reserves. Well, they, let me tell you this. If the prior commissions wouldn't have done what they've done, they wouldn't have to have that discussion. There'd be nothing in reserves. Yes, Max. Uh, so the, we've had sort of a general trend of questions, and the one thing that I've not heard that I would really like to see happen is for us to not look to government to renovate buildings and to develop industrial parks and to do those things, but rather look to government to provide the incentives and uh, means for companies to come in. So the taxpayer is not paying for that, but it results in that economic diversification. Thank you. Others? Well, we'll move to the next session of questioning and uh, we'll begin this questioning with uh, Max. What is your plan to effectively work with each department head and show how and how involved do you intend to be with their day-to-day -day responsibilities? So I have a series of meetings scheduled uh, with all of the department heads post Tuesday, assuming that goes well. Uh, I have met with some of them uh, to help get a better picture of where the city is at and what priorities we would need to look at. Uh, I've been very fortunate in that my company is in a place where I have about 20 business hours a week uh, that are just free time, and uh, I got bored having free time, so hence all the boards. Um, but I have the time to be in there and to be working with the department heads and to be making those plans and working with council uh, but the day-to-day -day operations, that's really their purview. So you know, the, the mayor and the council are saying, hey, this is where our priorities are, and then they're implementing it. So you know, if they really need somebody to help plow, uh, I'm happy to get trained or paint. You know, I'd show up, but in, in reality, uh, it would be at that administrative level. Thank you. I, I think this, uh, we, we need to understand where all five of us are on this issue. And uh, I, I think that uh, I, what I'm hearing is that the majority of the people I'm up here with are going to try to work with the current, uh, the current administration and the current uh, organization. Let there be no doubt that my opinion is that 
we need to change. We need to change things in, in Rock Springs. Without change, there's not going to be any progress, in my opinion. So uh, uh, the people that are in those positions, and I'm not talking about all of the, all of the employees of the, of the city, and I'm not talking about city council, but I'm talking about some of those department heads that are there. They need to be looked at, and they need to be evaluated with what they have done and what they intend to do in the future. With this round of questioning, we're going to be addressing that question to each of you. So, uh, David Dockridge, same question. I've talked to all the city supervisors. I know what they have problems with. We have major problems in the town right now because what we need is it's nobody's working together. I mean, the county, the city, it's all tearing apart. Right now, our biggest problem is, I'm going to pick the police for one thing, I'll just say this. When they have mental health, they can't put them in a jail because there's no padded cells there. The hospital doesn't have a psychiatrist up there, so they can't leave them at the hospital. They have to let them go, hoping they don't hurt themselves or somebody else. And that is a problem that we have to adjust. And the police are crammed into the city hall right now. And I've talked to Paul Kalsich about the old hospital, and I know how much parking space is on the edge. I would like to see that this county wants to give it to the city. The city can subdivide the parking lot and make residential lots. They can use that to redo the inside of the buildings for the police to move in there. That would have the courthouse and also have a place for one other thing. All the departments do their own purchasing, which is incredible. They can't get the best price for that. One of the problems is they don't have a warehouse, which the hospital can also be a warehouse for that. So one solution take one building they want to give to the city and just it would resolve all the problems or many of the problems the city has so okay Matt same question for me before my uh, time starts I wrote it down but okay. I want to make sure it's clear what is your plan to effectively work with each department head and how involved do you intend to be with their day-to-day -day responsibilities thanks for doing that uh, department heads is probably the most important role that the mayor takes on. Those people that he appoints that first month in office, they influence his administration and how the city runs for the next four years. My goal would be to establish expectations right away and make sure those expectations are being met. The expectations are you're doing what's best and you're using your head. You're acting with dedication and integrity and with courage when the time comes. My day-to-day -day operations, I am a hands-on, involved person. I like to be there. I like to see what's going on. I'm going to have an open door. I intend to be at City Hall basically from 1 to 5, 1 to 6, 4 to 5 days a week. That's the goal every day. And that's working with city employees. That's working with department heads, scheduling, making sure that we're all on the same page. Once I give them the objective and I give them the expectations, I want to monitor. I don't want to be there and be focused on them all day every day. I don't want to police them. I don't want to micromanage them. The goal is to hire good people that you don't micromanage. The city's got great people right now. I haven't interviewed everybody. I don't know what their vision and what their goals are for Rock Springs. And I'm not going to do that until after the I'm elected. That's an improper conversation to say, have them interview for the job when they don't even know who their boss is. I don't think that's, that's right. I've talked with them. I work with every department head on a weekly basis, except the judge. I don't spend a lot of time dealing with the judge. But uh, partnerships, working together, communication, what you use for any organization, I mean, that's the key. Uh, Wally, since you've addressed the question, we're going to move to Kathy, and then if you have a follow-up, we'll come back to you. Kathy? There it goes. Okay, just repeat it real quick, Tom. I want to make 100% sure. What is your plan to effectively work with each department head, and how involved to you do you intend to be with their day-to-day -day responsibilities? Okay, I've talked to upper level, not all the department heads, but I've been talking to the upper level to see what issues they have, what they need. Um, I don't see any transferring or removing anybody at this point. Um, but they do seem to be concerned about the city more than themselves. And my thing is to get them what they need if it's in within reason. 
There's also another issue that's been going on that I've already told them it's going to take about a year to correct. But what I see from them, they're not asking for anything that isn't a necessary need. The question is, is they also understand we may not be able to fill it right away, but it's on the list of to-dos for me. Hey, Wally, follow-up? I think the thing that's being overlooked here is uh, <clears throat> this, this has to be a team effort. And the thing that's been lacking, in my opinion, with the current administration is they don't work with the city council. The city council was elected to represent all of the people throughout the city. So I, whoever the mayor is has a responsibility to work with those people for the benefit of the Rock Springs. That's the first step that has to be ha that has to happen. The mayor needs to work with that city council, and I think then, with the help of the city council, when it becomes a team effort, there's no I in team. Then the thing will go much. The uh, city will go much better if we're working as a team, and that hasn't happened, and it should happen. Max, you have a follow-up. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, I am. Uh, deeply committed to the concept of relentless growth. I think all of us, whether you're the Pope or the President or, you know, putting in some new solid, needs to improve every day. And you either grow or you go. Uh, having said that, I would also like to clarify, if you're looking for an authoritarian dictator, I'm not your guy. Uh, I have spent the last 15 years really developing the ability to collaborate, bring in, and build those relationships. Thank you. Dave, <clears throat> follow up. Thank you. <clears throat> in talking to the city officials, there's one thing I found that I still really can't understand is the ambulance. Something at the county commissioners, and I'm not going to go any further, but we don't have an ambulance right now. We have a confusion of who's what. All contracts were canceled. So that has to be resolved. We need ambulance service here. I've talked to the fire department. The fire chief told me if we combine the city of Green River and Rock Springs Fire Department, we'd save Rock Springs close to $6 million and Green River $2 million. And also he talked about including the ambulance with the fire department. That would save the city so much money and we'd have um, fire department and ambulance taken care of and get it all, take, all structured and over with. And to talk about who with the county um, did what, I can't say that. I, I haven't found that out yet, but that is a major problem for Rock Springs. Kathy? Who are my buddy Max or Wally? So this is not an I thing, but the mayor has got to have strong leadership. I work with the department heads, work inside the departments to see what needs to be done. I don't think the city council needs to be bothered with every little thing that goes on side inside the department. Some of the stuff that they're asking for is just stuff that they've been needing for the last five or ten years. So I don't see that that makes me a dictator by trying to help them without making a nine-person thing to say, okay, I mean, the council has to vote it into the budget anyway, so they are involved. Okay, our final follow-up goes to Matt. Thank you, Tom. Candidates, we've had a great discussion already on how leadership looks at the city. People are right in one way or another, right? Everybody thinks what they're saying is right. At the end of the day, Rock Springs has a strong mayor system. That's something that Rock Springs has always had and that we're going to stay true to. That mayor is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the city. That mayor is responsible for providing the, the direction and to be that leader. Yeah, teamwork's important. You need help. No leader can do it on their own. But the direction, direction's important. The mayor needs to be the person that goes to the school district and the college and the hospital and brings those people together to give that direction for Rock Springs. So we're going in the same direction and we're working together and making good things happen. Final follow-up, Wally. Be simple. I think what we need to do is look who, who, was, who the mayors were when we were, the city was in great shape. I'll tell you who they were. They were Paul, Paul Wataha, Keith West, and, and uh, Carl Dempsher. We don't have that type of leadership today. And whoever is elected mayor, 
that's the kind of that's the kind of mayor we need is somebody that is can lead this city back to where it belongs to be the best the, the best city in the state of Wyoming okay we'll move to our next question and this is going to go to uh, Dave Rodakovich do you support or oppose the special purpose tax why or why not I talked to him yes because the city relies on sales tax that is one of the things that would get more sales tax to and that would be separate away from all the sales tax from the state that would be a property tax and who knows what the state's going to do they might cut it off but property tax will just help us out as a city altogether it is one of the taxes we need to have approved for a lot of the projects we have and all the future projects also at same question thank you Tom I like the special purpose tax I don't like new taxes I like the idea of the special purpose tax because it gives you the voters the decision on what we're pursuing I don't like the general purpose tax the one where it's 1% and it just goes to the general fund and there's not really allocated the special purpose tax where you guys are given a list of projects and things that you want to see happen in Rock Springs in your community to make it better and you get the decision, I can preach all day about what's important to me and what I think. You guys get the decision on the special purpose tax. It's one of the most democratic things we could do for our community and get you guys involved. And if the community says no new taxes, you can tell us that and you can say no. And if you say no and you say no, we know that that's never gonna fly and we have to find other avenues. But giving you guys the opportunity and the option is, is perfect. That's government. That's what a democracy is. Thank you. Ali, same question. It's a great question. <clears throat> when you look at uh, what we did with the special, pur special purpose tax, tax in the past, I'll name you a few things that we did with that. Medical office building was built with that. There were two renovations to the hospital that was used with the special purpose tax. Uh, there was a lot of other op uh, projects that were done in the cities and the small towns. So it, it, is, it, a good, it is a good way to go to in, increase the quality of our infrastructure. But the thing you need to do that's failing to happen right now, because it's not going to pass again, in my opinion, because you need to uh, make sure that the people that are going to vote on those projects understand what, what's going to be done with their money. After all, it is their money. And w and then the next thing that needs to be done is it's got to be put on the ballot properly. And in my opinion, what you have to do is let the public, that as they vote, they can select uh, sort of like a cafeteria way to do that. I like this 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 tax item to do this, and I don't like it here, so I'll I'll vote yes on this and not on the other. The other thing that needs to be understood is that. Uh, that you, we have to worry about the tiny towns. That's uh, Prevedel's deal. He's the one that passed that. Is uh, we have to take care of the uh, of the tiny towns, and and that has to be considered when we start looking at the special purpose tax. But it's not being presented to the public. Uh, hasn't been, and I don't think they're going to do it again. Kathy, special purpose tax, yes or no? At this time in our economy, I say no. Um, and most of the county commissioners, I believe, also said no the other night. It's just not good timing. Um, everything, our cost of living just keeps going up and going up and going up. Um, insurance has just went up. Gas has been coming down. We don't know how long that's going to stay or if it's going to go back up. Prices at the store keeps going up. So I just don't think that this is good timing for it. Max, special tax. I'm in favor of the special tax. I will vote as a private citizen for the special tax, uh, largely because we have chosen not to invest in our community repeatedly, and now we have the issues with the police station and the rec and the civic and the golf course irrigation, and those things just get continually more important. Um, I think it is the job of the mayor and the city council to have that conversation with the voters and say, are these priorities, are these things that you want us to continue offering? Because this is how we can do that right now. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that it will be successful because I too have been to the grocery store and experienced the sticker shock uh, of one little sad bag of groceries. 
but we are just putting the cost 10 years from now, 20 years from now, so much higher, and it is gonna be so much more difficult for us to address those needs if we keep kicking the can and we don't you know, bite the bullet and take care of it today. Thank you. I think you respond. Quick question, I didn't talk to the county about that. Are we not able to put it back on the ballot two years from now? I mean, I know that we need the money, but just right now I think is the timing. If it can go back on the ballot in two years from now, fine. Just right now. Is there some rule that it can only go on once every 10 years? Not that I know of, so. But yeah, our economy just isn't gonna hold. I don't think it'll get voted in. Other responses? Well, thank you for your answers to the questions. We'll now uh, entertain your final three-minute statements, and we'll start with uh, Matt Jackman. Point yes, of, Point Wally. of order, please. There, there's one issue that I, I didn't think we're gonna get addressed, and I think uh, it applies to all, all five of us, and I think it's an important issue, and that's the AML funding. Uh, we talked about the Bitter Creek uh, relative to that, but the issue is much larger in that, and I'd like to at least uh, let, make the public aware of, of what, what's going on with AML. And if, if I may, I'll, I'll make this very short. Uh, from 2015 to 2021, there was $71,750,000 spent in Sweetwater County. Roughly half of that went was done in Rock Springs. <clears throat> and there are still many projects that are still needed in Rock Springs in the county. But unfortunately, the current administration has caused a problem with the AML administration in Cheyenne and even with the governor. One of the, one of the issues that this, whoever's elected to be the mayor, they need to go to Cheyenne and they need to improve the relationship that we have with the governor and the administration and the AML funding so we can get that money back into Sweetwater County and Rock Springs. Follow up, Matt. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for bringing that up, Wally, and I'm glad you did. We have a new mayor coming in. That is going to happen. It's going to be one of the five of us. I'm confident that Governor Gordon or Governor Bean or whoever wins the election will be open and receptive to the fact that Rock Springs is turning over. We're going to have a new mayor. We're going to have three to four new council people. It's, it's going to be a new day. And I, in government, and when you're elected a lot, you understand that you can't hold the, the new administration accountable for the previous administration's faults. Those relationships aren't going to be challenging to build. You need the help of your legislators to know that it's a new day in Rock Springs and that we're not going to put up with that type of shenanigans anymore. We're here to be transparent, to be honest, and to take care of Rock Springs. Follow up, Kathy, Max, Dave. Okay, we will move to our final three-minute statements, and we will start with Max Jackman. Thank you, Tom. You know, tonight, you guys heard a lot of information, and I'm glad you guys came out. It is, uh, it's important. It's important to ask these tough questions. And the questions were tough tonight, and I was even surprised by them. I've been prepping for two weeks with my friends and family telling every skeleton in my closet and every bad thing I've ever voted on on the school district. They're like, well, how do you justify this? How do you justify that? And tonight the questions were surprising, and I'm glad. I'm glad that we had this discussion. Rock Springs has always been my home. It's always going to be my home, and I want to take care of it. I want to take care of it through leadership and dedication. You lead from the front. You want people to be like you. You want department heads to support you. You don't want to be adversaries. You want the city council to support you and be on board with you. That's something I've always done throughout my career. I've always put people together and given them a path. Every single role I've ever taken, I've been put in a leadership position. I'm excited to be the next mayor of Rock Springs. I know what I can do. I know that I can bring these parties, these bickering parties that never seem to get along together, and I can give us a direction for the benefit of all of Sweetwater County. Thank you, and thank you guys for coming. Wally Johnson, three minutes, final statement. Thank you very much. 
And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of Sweetwater County for giving me the privilege and the opportunity to be your county commissioner for 14 years. It was a great experience for me and I appreciate it very much. The thing I'd promise you that during those 14 years, there was no question about my integrity or my honesty. And there never will be. If I'm your mayor at the end of four years, that record will still be there. My, my integrity and my honesty is more important than any else, anything else to me. My brothers and their firm, it's nothing better for them also. And they've been drugged through the mud. And I just cannot stand that. And it's unfair. And, and unfortunately, that did happen, but it won't happen on my watch. The other thing I'd like to do, you, the first five commission, when we went to the first five commissioners, it was very, very successful, even though I was against it, but we went to five. And I'd like to recognize those five people, for, uh, those four people that did an outstanding job for you in Sweetwater County. They were Don Van Meter, the, and, and the, Don obviously has passed on, but he was a great commissioner. John Kolb, Reed West, and Gary Bailiff. These were great people to work with. They did an outstanding job for you. And I hope the current commission can do, the elect, current elect commission can do the same. In Gary Bailiff's case, it was not only Gary that did that. He was the county sheriff for a while. And then he was, uh, his wife was the county clerk, probably the best county clerk Sweetwater County's ever had. We need a change in that county clerk position, and I hope that happens. Because the person that's running uh, against the in incumbent had her training with Bobby Bailiff, and I, I think the, the county would be better off if, if that would happen. Again, I thank you, and I appreciate it very much, and I'd appreciate your vote next week. Kathy Phelps, three minutes for a final statement. First of all, oops, I do want to thank Rick Lee and the Chamber for putting on the event, all the helpers in here that he has. Tom, definitely thank you for moderating. Thank everyone who did attend, and I want to thank Wyoming Foreign News for broadcasting this for the ones that could not attend. Um, I've been talking to people in the city that work for the city. I've been talking to the people in the county. One issue that I did want to bring up, and it's a big concern for me, is the flooding. I see that the city and the county are working on what they can do. There's nothing more disgusting. Everyone wants this and everyone wants that, but there's nothing more disgusting than someone's basement being flooded with the disease and the mold that's in there. And so I'm glad to see that things are being done, and I'll be working on that also. I'm not working by myself. I'm working with a large group of people with the council, but I'll also be working with county and BLM if we have to. I'm very good at getting people to get past their problems and work together. That I've always been very good at. So as far as the city goes, I think that with the money crunch that we have going on and we need to bring in new businesses, a variety of businesses, but whoever we can get to come in and make a base for us is what we need to be looking at. So I hope that you will vote for me. I think that the next four years are going to get financially sound, and I think that we will improve. I do like our downtown. It's very vibrant now, and I think that we need to keep our small businesses here. I think that they're doing very well. So we need to bring in any businesses that we can, hopefully large ones that will employ a lot more people. But thanks, everybody, for showing up. And I'll be out in the lobby if anyone has any questions following. Max Mickelson, three minutes for your final statement. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Uh, I'd like to read a, a little story that I read that was, and I wish I could remember his name, fairly bright guy, uh, when he was talking about leadership. And uh, he talked about how there are people in executive positions that we obey because they have authority over us. And there are people who have no authority that we follow because they're leaders. And what leaders do is they take care of the person to the left of them and the person to the right of them. And I've never read anything that better sums up my approach and philosophy than that. I've been very fortunate over the last 20 years to serve our community locally and our state. I've developed uh, very solid relationships with 
people not only in Cheyenne, but also legislators throughout the state. And I think that would be a significant advantage to the city. Uh, thank you all for your time and attention. And uh, I certainly hope that you would do me the honor of uh, considering me Tuesday. Thank you. Dave Rudakovich, take us home. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate y'all being here. Now this next idea I got from Jackson Hole. Now they used to always put their play in the middle of the street. Everybody crowded the plate and it was great. After it was over, everybody rushed to the stores and just bought them out. I asked Rick Beckwith, Rock Springs, yeah, we were bad in the 70s, but we got on 60 Minutes. Why is everybody hiding from that? I thought we could use that to try to, um, you know, not bring that back to Rock Springs, but just the element. Get with the theater group, get with the college, get with the high school, and have put on plays downtown close to the businesses and have it do it. Just go ahead and do all the history, the book chats and everything. And then when they're done doing the play, let them go to the stores. Make sure they're open so they open their stores. The other thing I would like to do is figure out a way to put lights on the trees that Mayor West put up on Dewar Drive. Permanent lights that you could use for Christmas, you know, and for pink, have them change of pink and all the different colors. Don't take them down, just have them up on Dewar Drive all year long. Make it beautiful, make it nice in the city for everybody. Enjoy town a little bit more. Just make it better than it is now. And that's what I would like to do. I grew up here, I want to make it very nice. And I appreciate you voting for me from here. I have good ideas, but I'll try to make everything happen. Thank you. Okay, on behalf of the Rock Springs Chamber of Commerce, YO Radio, YO 4 News, and our candidates, thanks to the people here at the Broadway Theater who came out tonight for the debate, and also those folks tuning in on our Facebook page. My name is Tom Ellis, your moderator for tonight's debate. Next Tuesday is primary election day here in Sweetwater County and around the state of Wyoming. I would encourage everyone to exercise their privilege to vote by showing up at the polls. From the Broadway Theater in downtown Rock Springs, this is Tom Ellis saying good night to everyone.
finished, so now we're going to go on to the main main event. So I don't know if the mayors would appreciate that. But we uh, before we get going and before we introduce them, we do want to give a special thanks to those who are helping out today. Um, we got special timers that are helping out: uh, J.T. Larson, Graydon Bingham, and the beautiful Carmel Lee. So thank you for timing. We also have working cameras, Rosa and Scotty Pugh. Thank you, guys. And working lights is Adam Larson and Pete Delarani. So thank you so much for volunteering and helping out and, and uh, making this event good and giving people information that they need to vote. Um, I, this is an important event as well, an important debate as well. We're, we're going to be electing a new mayor, but we're also going to be electing a, a new council. And so your responsibilities are huge. And we, uh, we as a as a city depend a lot upon the decisions that you make and so the information that you can give to the folks who are voting is imperative so this is this, not to put any pressure on you but this is really important life-changing okay so we would like to introduce the uh, candidates who are who are running for city council in rock springs uh, Jeannie Demas who is running unopposed and then Tom Allen who could not be here due to a uh, attention to family concerns Bradley Chrisham, who is away attending to family needs. But then on the stage we have joining us David Thompson, representing Ward, th Ward 2. <laughs> Daniel Pedri, representing Ward 3. <laughs> Randy Hansen, representing Ward 4. <laughs> and because we drew him out of the hat, we actually put Randy and Eric to sitting next to each other. They weren't crazy about that, but sorry, guys. And representing Ward 4 also, Eric Bingham. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, here is Tom Ellis. Thank you, Rick. On behalf of the Rock Springs Chamber of Commerce, YO Radio, YO 4 News, and our candidates, thanks to the people here at the Broadway Theater who came out tonight for this debate, and also those folks tuning in on our Facebook page. My name is Tom Ellis, your moderator for tonight's debate. With that, let's get started. We'll ask each of you for a uh, three-minute introductory speech, and we'll start down on this end with David Thompson. First, first off, I'd like to reiterate uh, thanks for everybody that puts this on. I mean, it's, there's quite a bit that we don't know about that it takes to put something on like this. Uh, Start out, my name is David Thompson. I moved to Rock Springs when I was 13 years old. Uh, throughout my life, I've lived in many other states, many other cities due to military or family or uh, school obligations. Uh, but 30 years ago, uh, I was living up by Seattle, and an incident happened up there that put my family in jeopardy, and I moved back to Rock Springs. I moved home. Uh, I applied, and after a very grueling background process, I got hired on with the Rock Springs Police Department. Uh, I did that to provide to my family and also to be able to continue serving my community. Uh, I retired from law enforcement three years ago after serving 25 years with both the Rock Springs Police Department and the Sweetwater County Sheriff's Office. Uh, my family and I recently decided that I should return to public service in a much different way and continue and by running for a seat on the city council. Uh, I don't have an agenda or a list of things that I believe need fixed. Uh, I'm not going to bash the current administration, the department heads, city employees, or my opponent, as we have all volunteered to put ourselves out here in the public eye and submit ourselves to scrutiny for every decision and everything that we say and do. That takes quite a bit of courage for everybody is for throughout the debates through, throughout the whole week. Uh, I will, however, defend myself and my honor and my integrity just as I have defended my country, the state, this county, and the people of the city of Rock Springs. Do I have all the answers? No. Uh, will I listen to those that care and have constructive input on how things should pr progress? Yes, I will listen uh, to anybody that feels like they want to talk to me. And the biggest thing is, do I have a lot to learn? This, this is my first foray into public office, and the learning curve for me is, I feel, going to be a very steep one. 
We all pay attention to the national and state political races and issues, and th those do affect our lives. But it, all too often we forget it's these local races that we have been sitting here all week listening to either in person or on the, uh, the, the YO4 Facebook page. Th this is where, and I'm dating myself, this is where the rubber hits the road. This is, this is where it's going to, to hit us. I'm asking, all I'm asking for is the opportunity to take part in this great American process. Thank you. I should have also mentioned that David is running for a position from Ward number two. Uh, our next up is Daniel Pedri from Ward three. Daniel, three minutes. Thank you. First, I would like to thank everyone for coming out here tonight and the people who organized the debate. My name is Daniel Pedri, and I am running for City Council in Ward 3. I'm hoping for the opportunity to represent you in the next term. I am a lifelong resident of Rock Springs, and upon graduating from Rock Springs High School in 2004, I attended Western Wyoming Community College and got an Associate of Science degree in 2006. In 2008, I completed my bachelor's degree from the University of Wyoming in finance, and I returned to Rock Springs to begin my working years. I worked, my first uh, job was with Questar Gas as a field operator, and then I took a position with Anadarko Petroleum working in their finance department. I left Anadarko in 2019 to manage our family rental business, and that's what I am currently doing. I married my wife, Rory Pedri, in 2010, and Rory is employed as a school nurse with Sweetwater County School District number one. We have three school-age children, and we are very active in all their activities and grateful for the opportunities that we have within the community. However, visiting with friends and people that I work with around town, I hear a lot about what's wrong with our community, our state, our nation, and just politics in general. Those are all very important conversations, but we need to address the issues facing our community. And the way that I was raised, when you're faced with a problem, you find a way to be a part of the solution. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm attempting to give something back to enhance our quality of life in Rock Springs. And listen, I don't have all the answers. I don't have an ax to grind or a pet issue to pound into the ground. But I do have a desire to serve. I have the ability to listen, capacity to learn, and willingness to work together to reach the goals that will help move the city forward. And I know Rock Springs because I am Rock Springs, just like a lot of you guys. My experience growing up here as a third generation native, working the oil patch, my background in finance, and running our family business have given me the knowledge and tools that I will need to be impactful for the Rock Springs residents of Ward 3. And I believe that politicians make too many promises that they just end up breaking down the line, but I'm not a politician. I'm a person who wants to make a difference, and I can promise you that if you elect me, I will, give you, I will give this job the attention that it deserves. Again, my name is Daniel Pedri, candidate for Rock Springs City Council Ward 3, and I'm looking forward to the discussion ahead and hearing your questions for this panel of candidates. <laughs> Next, uh, Randy Hansen from Ward 4. Randy, your three-minute opening statement. Uh, hi, and thank you, Mr. Ellis. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. Uh, let me start by saying I'm already known to a lot of you, uh, but for those people I haven't met yet, my name is Randy Hansen, and yes, I'm running for the city council position representing Ward 4. To tell you a little bit about myself, I'm a longtime resident of Rock Springs and Ward 4. I moved here in a snowstorm about 40 years ago in February of 1982. It took me about a year or two to, to get acclimated, but I have since adopted the Wyoming way of life. Uh, I'm proud to call Rock Springs home, and uh, I see myself as a conservative Republican. I believe these, that things are looking up for Wyoming and for Ward 4. I'm definitely not a career politician, nor do I enter the race with any agendas other than to do the best that I can for the betterment of Rock Springs and Ward 4. I will take common sense approach to the issues and try my best to come up with the best options moving forward. Some of you might remember me as a successful businessman running restaurants and bars for over 15 years uh, previously. Uh, I understand budgets, I understand costs, uh, prioritizing 
and economics. I've been a public servant. I've been a local law enforcement officer for over 30 years, uh, most of that time with the Rock Springs Police Department. And during that time, I've worn many different hats. I, as an officer, I was a supervisor, a trainer, and even an instructor with over 2,000 post hours of credit. I'm currently working for the Sweetwater County Sheriff's Office as a deputy sheriff assigned to the court bailiff position to the circuit court judges, as well as building security for the court complex and detention center west of town. I hope to retire in the next couple years where I can, uh, I hope to retire in the next couple years uh, where I can plan to be able to work full time for the citizens of Rock Springs. Um, I'm married to my wife, Misty, and have raised a family or two uh, here in Rock Springs with my kids attending and graduating from Rock Springs High School. Uh, being an involved parent in their activities such as basketball, young American football, high school football, hockey, little league, uh, gymnastics, cheerleading, and the list goes on. If you have kids or grandkids, you know what I mean. I've had many wonderful, I've met many wonderful people during those times. Um, I believe uh, that, I believe even though I'm new in politics, um, I have the ability to listen and learn. Uh, I definitely want to listen to the people of, the, of my ward and I definitely want to learn from the people that are there and doing it now. I want to learn from their triumphs and I want to learn from their mistakes. Uh, and hopefully by putting that all together, that will help me be the best councilman that I possibly can for the people of Ward 4. I've in the past been involved with the Rock Springs City Union. Thank you, Randy. Our final opening statement comes from Eric Bingham. Three minutes, Eric. Um, and first, I want to thank the Rock Springs Chamber of Commerce uh, for putting on this event, Tom Ellis for moderating, Bruce Pivick, and the Wild Four News for holding the City Council debates this evening, including the mayoral debates. And thank you for everyone uh, making it through a week of debates. Uh, it's been a long week, and just excited that you're here to learn more about us. I'm running for Ward 4, as similar to my candidate, uh, opponent, and I just look forward to, and I also want to tell uh, Councilman Keaton West, I uh, appreciate his service for Ward 4, and also for uh, Councilman Botello for representing Ward 4 also. So for those of you who don't know me, uh, the story starts in 2004. Uh, I was a park ranger for the state of Utah, uh, and I had recently graduated from Post peace officer standard training in Utah, so I was an actual peace officer in law enforcement uh, for three years. And then our family made the huge decision of uh, uh, wanting to move next closer to family, and we moved from Vernal, Utah to uh, Rock Springs, Wyoming. We were closer to family. There was a position that was opened up at the county. Uh, I started as a planning and zoning technician, and uh, been there 18 years and have worked my way up to land use director uh, with the county. What's been exciting is that position has been dynamic and it's, it's pulled me into areas I never thought I'd be moved into, uh, which include planning and zoning, uh, code enforcement, um, subdivision regulations, and just recently economic development. One thing that I learned uh, when I got the position uh, was the importance of private property rights. And I know that's very important to the citizens of Wyoming. And there's a balance there uh, when you have regulations uh, versus someone's property rights. And when do your property rights uh, end and, and when do you affect your neighbor? And so I, I got a firm understanding of that. One of my proudest accomplishments at the county is that um, we streamlined the development process and that was important. Uh, we were actually one of the most hated departments uh, <laughs> everywhere. And yeah, I see some people laughing that, that no. <laughs> and we went in there, changed the zoning code from 300 pages to 170. And uh, it used to be that you had 10 people would have to sign off on a shed permit. So one thing I understood was how to streamline and, and, bring, and bring that development process. So. 
what I what I would like to say is is that um, I, I look forward to uh, serving you and bringing these skills that I have uh, to the City Council. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. Rick, you have a statement to read? I do, Tom. Um, thank you. And this was from Tom Allen, and, and he must speak a little bit faster than I do, I've got, so I couldn't get this done in three minutes. So what I'll do is split it up and give the opening, and then in the closing arguments, I'll finish it. Hopefully that's okay with Tom. Dear Rick, fellow candidates, and the citizens attending and participating in these important discussions, I want to thank the Rock Springs Chamber for providing this important forum for all candidates to get their message out to the voters. Unfortunately, I am unable to participate in the discussions today due to a medical issue that, was, that is being addressed in Salt Lake City. Hopefully, we have another opportunity to discuss the issues prior to the general election in November. Obviously, there are important issues that need to be addressed by the City of Rock Springs, including the budget and quality of life in our town. The budget is the elephant in the room for the foreseeable future due to the uncertainty of coal, oil, and gas, the pandemic, and other issues that are out of our hands. However, I do believe that there are steps that we can take that will help ensure continued progress for our city. These steps include diversifying our economy, improving the quality of life for our residents while providing experiences that people visiting our city can enjoy. I realize that people, and especially candidates, are always talking about diversifying our economy, but, we can, but what can we can actually do to accomplish this goal? To be perfectly honest, I'm not sure but I believe that diversification of the economy can go hand in hand with improving the quality of life for our residents and providing quality experiences for our visitors. Working closely with Sweetwater Economic Development Coalition and Sweetwater County will be crucial to any progress in diversifying the economy. We have so many wonderful outdoor activities that I believe are not being fully utilized. For example, White Mountain has beautiful vistas, hiking and biking, and wild horse viewing that are not fully developed. This will take cooperation by the cities of Rock Springs and Green River, Sweetwater County, BLM, Travel and Tourism, the Chamber, the Events Complex, and other stakeholders that have already begun developing these resources. Additionally, we are a gateway to many destinations. So, if we can capitalize on our location to keep visitors here for a longer period of time, we will see a huge uptick in sales tax revenues and services that our citizens can enjoy. This is from Tom Allen. We were just waiting to be able to cut you off. <laughs> okay, we will now move on to our question portion of tonight's program, and we will start with Dave Thompson. Rock Springs is about to experience a significant changeover in city leadership with a new mayor and a new city council. There are projects currently underway and new opportunities are sure to be proposed. How will you manage the current projects and what new projects would you like to see promoted in Rock Springs and why? The biggest job I'm going to have when I go in, like I said, is learning what's currently happening. I'm going to rely heavily on the, uh, the current council and the department heads to learn. Uh, because without that information, I cannot make an informed decision. But I'm going to rely, like I said, I'm going to rely on the county, the commissioners, commissioners, councilors, and like I said, there's going to be f f several new ones and a, and a totally new mayor. It's going to be a very large learning curve. Uh, the projects I'd like to see is I'd like to finish the ones that we've we've got going. Uh, one of the, the things that I've thought about is like the signage and beautification to a certain extent of Rock Springs. As you travel through Rock Springs, like I said, we are, we are the gateway to Yellowstone and we have so many beautiful areas in this town that aren't being utilized. Uh, for people, new people coming in, you know, when they drive into town, to be able to navigate our, our city, I think, is, is might be an issue that people have talked to me before when they, they're trying to find certain areas or certain businesses or things like that. Just uh, make it easier for the people coming through to get to experience everything we have. Thank you. Rebuttal? Yes, Eric. And I think uh, in addition to that, just as uh, Mr. Thompson was stating, um, just as was 
spoken in the the other projects is definitely you know with the Bitter Creek project of course with the reduction in revenues and such that uh, it's important um, that we work uh, with the state with AML funding to continue that one thing that's um, good about the Bitter Creek project and it has received some uh, criticism is that the floodplain I live um, on Wardell Court and we have Dead Horse Creek that runs behind us and I know how much impediment there is with floodplain insurance when you're having to pay fifteen hundred dollars a year for floodplains so it'd be great to see um, that project complete so we can pull people out of the floodplain and, and expand those development opportunities thank you David follow-up all right our next question goes to Daniel Pedri Rock Springs adheres to a strong mayor form of government where the elected mayor is given administrative authority and a clear, wide range of political independence. Do you believe that this is an effective form of leadership for Rock Springs? Would you prefer to hire a city manager or CEO and change to a weak mayor form of government? Well, I believe that a strong council creates a strong mayor, and we have to work together as a team and continue to move forward. I don't believe that uh, hiring additional staff is going to solve our issues that we're currently facing. So we have to use the resources that are available. We're going to have a very talented team. And if we work together, we will create that unity. Rebuttal? Yes, David. I, I just wanted to add on to that. Uh, where the, the, the mayor is the supervisor of the department heads. Uh, the department heads are uh, brought forward by the mayor, approved by the council, but the department heads have the one boss, the mayor. I, I have seen at times where council people come in and try to start dictating to the department heads. Uh, I, I do not like that. Uh, you work, the council works with the mayor, but ultimately the mayor is their boss. And you'll follow up. Okay, Randy. I agree that the department heads need a mayor that's in charge and uh, that we can all work together as a team. I don't think that there's any problem with us talking to each other and trying to work through all the problems together uh, to try to make Rock Springs stronger. Uh, everybody is grown-ups we can work through the problems and we can move on and uh, hopefully with the guidance of a, of a strong mayor a strong council and strong department heads we can make uh, Rock Springs great yes Eric uh, I agree with that I, I agree with the current system that it is now um, with the strong mayor system I would hope that uh, moving forward as we as council members uh, would receive uh, concerns and complaints from our constituents with it, whichever ward we're in. Um, and I don't believe in micromanagement, um, but I do that we can, if we have the ability um, to reach out to the respective department head, if there are issues, um, just sending an email and carbon copy the, the mayor on that would be a good system. Thank you. And you'll any follow up? Okay, our next question goes to Randy Hansen. What specific actions can be taken by this new council to work through the challenges of a budget shortfall? What do you anticipate the financial climate to be for Rock Springs two years from now? Uh, thank you, Tom. I think that's an excellent question. I uh, think the future of Rock Springs is looking up. Uh, we've had to tighten our belts. Uh, through COVID, uh, we, everybody's kind of cut, everybody's worked their way through. Uh, being that all those cuts have come through, we've learned a lot, I think, uh, and developed a lot. I think going into the future, as the economy gets stronger and people get out and, and uh, participate in things around the city and uh, tourists come through and we get more, more money in the coffers, uh, that uh, things will get much better and uh, I, I want to say that I think that the future uh, is looking bright in Rock Springs. Rebuttal? Yes, Eric. So, 
Yes, the the revenue is of concern, and the amount of money that's also been pulled out of reserves um, is not sustainable over the years. Um, if we're looking in the next five years, so um, one thing that some when I read the Craig report, which is the revenue projections for uh, the state of Wyoming, including Sweetwater County, things are looking definitely better. Um, and especially with the reports of the sales taxes that are coming in uh, just recently. And so there is, there's definitely good hope in, in moving forward and looking at those things. And then we also um, are looking at good things as far as uh, industrial siting monies that could be potentially applied for by the city. Uh, that would bring impact fees back into the city um, with these large projects such as the Jenner expansion, Pacific Atlantic Trona. So I think those things are going to definitely bring in uh, additional revenue into the city. Any follow-up? Our next question is for Eric Bingham. Diversification has been talked about for years in Sweetwater County as a necessary avenue for growing our economy. What declining city revenues, with declining city revenues, what would you specifically do to encourage economic diversification efforts? Thank you for the, thank you for the question. So uh, as you know, I'm, I'm, I uh, work with Sweetwater Economic Development Coalition to have a pretty good firm understanding of economic diversification. One thing that um, I think we need to hit on that's really important uh, moving forward is 80% of jobs, of job growth, comes from the existing industry and businesses that are here. I think it's important uh, for the city council and the, and the city and the mayor to work with our local businesses. I would support, so as a foundation of economic diversification, when you have 80% of your job growth coming from your city, is working with those and assuring that, uh, so I would support a business retention and expansion program as the SCDC is currently working on, Sweetwater Economic Development Coalition, that would make sure that the, the needs are being met. Um, the coal mines and the big industries, uh, workforce issues, infrastructure issues, those are things that are extremely important when you're looking at job growth. Business attraction, is the 20 to 10% to of what uh, a community can attract. We're very lucky to see what we've seen with Caltech with the success of the recruitment of that, but those things do take time. But as a city council member, I would focus on uh, existing businesses and making sure that their needs are met. Thank you. Rebuttal. Okay, our next round of questioning with, with Dan. What skill set have you developed that will help you communicate effectively with a few incumbent council members, several new members, and a brand new mayor? Yeah, thanks for the question, Tom. Uh, my daily routine, I spend a lot of time working with many families in the community, and I understand the challenges that you know everyone goes through on a daily basis, and everybody is fighting in their own fight, whether that's at uh, the local level of city government or in your household so my you know core values serve to help support that open communication integrity and trust and being transparent and we can have very meaningful discussions and have a difference of opinion but at the end of the day we will all you know have the same desire for rock springs to move forward Rebuttal. Okay, our next question is for Randy Hansen. What plans do you have to in place to effectively listen to your constituents and address issues that continually come up? I definitely would like to hear from all my uh, constituents. I, I, part of my campaign is to be the voice of Ward 4. Uh, if uh, they let me know what their concerns are and uh, what their needs are, I would be more than happy to bring those before the people that we need to to get things taken care of and keep things running uh, smoothly and effectively and hopefully to progress into a, a better economic future and uh, good infrastructure and uh, just make Rock Springs a wonderful place. Bud? I think you're going to find there's a, a focus on communications on these questions. Uh, Eric, what steps would you take to encourage communication and promote unity in the council? 
Yeah, so one important thing uh, when you're working with boards, um, and in, you know, I've worked on this, uh, I was president of the Sweetwater County Recreation Board, I also was on the Sweetwater Economic Development Coalition Board. Uh, one thing is, is, is working with others, and I, I, you, you do see some conflicts that are going on right now um, on the existing board, and I would look to uh, strengthen those relationships working with your other council members. As one member, um, you know, you have to work together collaboratively to, to, to make decisions and to be effective. Um, it doesn't mean compromising everything that you have. It's expressing opinions and going back and forth and uh, coming to some sort of compromise. But there are times when you have to, when things may not go uh, as planned and there's things that you will stand up uh, singly possibly. But to be an effective council and moving forward, we do, you know, you need a majority and you got eight members and uh, you need to be working together. Thank you. Rebuttal. Okay, our final question in this round goes to Dave Thompson. You, what uniquely qualifies you for a city council seat? How much time do you think an elected councilman should commit to that position? I'll start with the last part. Uh, a lot of people think uh, you got two meetings per month and from talking to other councilors, uh, definitely not true. You, you end up with boards and meetings and the, a lot of them spend a, a lot of their a lot of their time on other boards, meeting with uh, with county hospital boards. You, you interact with the school. Uh, it's it's gonna. I plan on spending a lot more time than I do now. Like I said, I've ret been retired for three years. I've kind of been a hermit, sticking you know around the house, and it's time time to get out and give back. Uh, for the first part of that, what what? Do I bring? What was? It? What what uniquely <coughs> qualifies you for a city council seat? Uh, a lot of it. Uh, politics can get. I think if if we all watch the the the, the meetings on the YouTube when it comes out live, they, they can get contentious. But you've got to be able to uh, speak with people with respect and listen and understand that your view may not be the only one out there. Be, you've got to be able to listen to someone else and be able to put yourself in their shoes and uh, talk to people. Like yesterday at the uh, meet and greet, I got to meet a lot of people, whether they were in my ward or not, that had questions. And it was one of those, if I don't have the answer, I can definitely tell, point you in the area that somebody knows that answer or I can find it for you. It, it's going to be, I think, I think it's going to be a full-time job for me. Thank you. Rebuttal. Okay, our next round of questions is going to start with Randy. Do you support or oppose the special purpose tax? Why or why not? That seems to be a very hot topic this year. Um, I personally like the special, per uh, special purpose tax. I think that the infrastructure and uh, the things that they're going to definitely do need to be addressed. And they will need to be addressed at some time in the future. Um, if we do it in the future, it's going to cost us more money. If we do it in the future and uh, we have some kind of catastrophe, it's definitely going to cost the taxpayers more money in the long run. As far as the tax goes, talking with my constituents and stuff, um, the tax I do not think will go. Um, everybody I've talked to says no. Uh, I think that they've stacked a lot of different things into the taxes. Uh, I, I definitely think a general purpose tax that they voted down uh, unanimously almost um, is, is not a good thing. Uh, but the, with the specific purpose tax, it goes to specific things with a specific time frame and gets things taken care of. And I think in the long run, it would save uh, uh, taxpayers money. Um, if I had to uh, vote on it as a councilman right now, I would have to vote no. Uh, but as an individual, I would probably vote yes. Okay, we won't have any rebuttal on this because I'm going to ask each of you the same question. Eric, <clears throat> special purpose tax, yes or no? 
That's an excellent question. Thank you for the question. So um, I support a special purpose tax um, the, compared to the general purpose tax. The sentiment of the public is definitely uh, there's concerns with it. Um, as far as what I see with the role of government when these situations come up is to lay those projects out that are a priority um, and with public involvement. And so there are projects that are on there that uh, are infrastructure projects. Uh, my concern is, is if they aren't done, um, where when things start to fail, whether they're uh, water and sewer or roads, um, how do we pay for those in the future? And are there additional fees that are going to be added? Because if there's not a way of doing it from a tax, what are other ways that it's going to get done? So I know what the, the voters will decide. Um, there's, I would encourage anyone to um, look at the list. Uh, it'll be a cafeteria style from what I understand um, and decide which projects they do support. Uh, are they water and sewer? Um, there are some imperative health and safety ones that are on there too. So I encourage you um, this in uh, November to become informative of it and make your appropriate vote. Thank you. Okay, uh, David Thompson, same question. As far as the differences, I, I like the way that the uh, specific tax is put out. The, the general, not so much. If you have specific projects you want out, lay it out for the voters. Like it's been said several times throughout this week, it's the voters' money. It's, it's not my money. As far as our responsibility as the council or commissioners or uh, the politicians, it's, it's our job to convince people why we need these specific taxes. We've, we've talked about it all week about the, the economy and people are having to tighten their belts. That means everyone. But if you don't, you don't just put general, okay, I want, I want your money and I'll, I'll spend it. No, I do not like that. You want to you want to tell me exactly what you need it for? Let let the people decide uh, how that's going to go. Thank you. And you'll Pedri, final th or your your thoughts on the special purpose tax? <clears throat> I absolutely support the process for the special purpose tax, just like everybody else has said at the table tonight, because we do need to you know push forward with projects, but we also have to let the voters vote on that and. Uh, you know, through that process, I think that uh, we can educate and show where the money is going and the infrastructure development is for the better of Rock Springs as a whole. And to touch slightly on the general purpose tax, uh, the allocation is unclear and that uh, is, doesn't sit very well with me not knowing where my money goes and I can assume that the voters are also you know, on board with that. Any uh, our next round of questions goes and starts with uh, Eric. Mental health is a rising issue all over the world and certainly is a growing concern right here in Sweetwater County and Rock Springs. What can a city council do to address this serious and troubling issue? Fortunately, well, from what I've seen uh, in talking with uh, one who's a huge advocate for that is Les Mock and is a great inf uh, information on the nonprofits. Suicide pre prevention is a huge issue in Sweetwater County. We have a high rate of it. It's something that needs to be addressed um, locally here. Uh, there's just there's there's a lot of things in any way that we can do working uh, with any nonprofits and such uh, and having those discussions is very important and having those resources. It is a definite issue of an issue right now that we're dealing with that does need to be addressed. So I would support those discussions, uh, working with staff and working with other city council members for whoever is elected. And I would definitely support any programs for that. Dave, <clears throat> mental health issues. This is a topic that's very personal to me. Uh, I recently lost my nephew to suicide last year, and I lost my son nine years ago. Uh, I recently joined my wife with uh, the Sweetwater County uh, Prevention Coalition and with Sweetwater Counseling. Uh, we are number one in the nation as far as state of Wyoming, and Sweetwater County is the highest in the state for the suicide. So if, 
hasn't affected anyone here or watching tonight, consider yourself lucky because it's it's very prevalent. I agree with Eric. We we need to work at something. To, we need to find the the, the causes, and and there's many. Uh, to be a, a teenager these days, our our veterans. Uh, I think we need to step up our game, and I'm forward looking into anything that will help us do that. Thank you. And you'll Pedri, mental health issues. David, I'm very sorry to hear about your losses, and I agree. We have to look at this as an essential service and find resources to help. And you know, one life is too many lost, and if we can save a life, um, that is – you know, well worth our time and our effort. So I think that this should be the center of a lot of discussions and find a way to find the money within the budget to devote to, to helping others in the community because the loss of a person impacts so many of us. And I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely uh, on board with doing whatever we can to, to help with prevention from a school age up to the veterans or just anybody that needs somebody to talk to. Randy, your thoughts on mental health. Mental health is a big issue here in Rock Springs, uh, Wyoming, and in the Western United States. Um, it's something that we have to all address. We all are exposed to it, uh, and we need to see what we can do to make it better uh, with through counseling, through talking to others, uh, to take the stigma of not being able to talk to people, to communicate and see the signs of mental health, and to help people get the help that they need. Uh, I think it's important that uh, we get the education out there to the public and to uh, help raise the awareness of uh, mental health issues. Thank you. Okay, our final round of questions starts with uh, Dave Thompson. Will you support or oppose the continued development of the first security bank building and or Bitter Creek project? I think we, we've started those, and especially with the Bitter Creek. Uh, Eric had talked about that's not just a beautification. It's to uh, alleviate the floodplain, which a lot of people in this city pay extra insurance for if we can alleviate that that's that's something that I think that we need to continue per pursuing uh, even the it's gonna and it's gonna take some money but I think that one is in, in the long run is gonna gonna help all all of the city especially the downtown areas the the bank building uh, I haven't uh, looked into a lot of that uh, but I think rejuvenating our downtown, I think, is something that that we need to continue to look at. I don't, I don't know uh, how budget, how that uh, the budget is going on that. Uh, and like I said at my opening, I've got a lot to learn, and I'm, and I'm gonna have to talk with uh, like Paul Kalsich down at the uh, engineering office. Uh, and I don't, I don't want to give answers that I have no clue what the answers are. I'm going to be asking a lot of questions, and I'm probably going to be bugging the department heads, and they're probably going to get sick of me. Thank you. And you'll Pedri. Yeah, thanks, Tom. So the Bitter Creek expansion or restoration project is uh, near and dear to everybody in my ward because that will mitigate them from the floodplain. So I do believe following through with the project and getting it done in the most efficient manner is critical. Uh, I, I believe that there are some parts of that project that we could look at again to cut some cost. Uh, the, the bank building, I, it's another project that's going to bring a lot to downtown Rock Springs, which is a pillar of our community. And it may cost a lot of money, but if we can start marketing it and finding a long-term tenant to secure that rental agreement and move forward with the rest of the funds at that point, I think that that would be in the best interest of Rock Springs and the community to have a building like that downtown completely restored and have a, a business in there that uh, we can all utilize. 
Will you support or oppose the continued development of the First Security Bank building and or Bitter Creek project? Randy Hansen. Um, I think both projects are valid projects. I think the uh, Bitter Creek project to take care of and resolve some of the flood issues that we've had uh, historically since uh, the very beginning. If we can do anything we can do to mitigate that and uh, create a better uh, uh, life for the people that are in those planes, I think that would be great. Also for the bank building, I think for our economic development and for the downtown, I think you are, the URA has done an excellent job for promoting the downtown and to help the economic success of the smaller businesses downtown. And uh, I think that that bank building would be a, a, a definitely an asset to the community and uh, the downtown area. Eric Bingham, final question. No, um, good question. So I'll start with First Security Banks that is in Ward 4. Um, and it appears that things have started with a business ready grant um, that has secured the building which is good. Um, there was a lot of cost involved with that uh, that came from the state. And now we're moving on to phase two, which is $6 million. And the uh, option there is a business committed grant. So I think it, right now they, the city has hired a real estate agents to sit there and promote uh, and work in uh, bigger, uh, bigger metropolitan areas to try to get uh, people here to actually uh, get located or have tenants in the building. Um, there are some options. Uh, I'm a certified economic development financial planner, so I have worked on uh, as far as deals and providing uh, things that could help private developers potentially uh, move in there, uh, whether it's uh, rehabilitation tax credits or things like that they could potentially do as far as the first security building. Downtown is dear to my heart. I live on Wardell Court, which is in walking distance, so it's something I would like to see complete because um, it does affect the businesses that are down there locally, and it did affect them with parking and such. Um, so I would like to see that eventually complete, um, but it will take money, it will take time, and, uh, and efforts like that. As far as the Bitter Creek project goes, just as like I stated in my opening, um, the floodplain is an important issue to deal with, and, and I've dealt with it personally, and it would be great to see something like I think what we need to do and I've spoken with Senator Kolb, and I've spoken with Representative Stith concerning potentially uh, if there is ways of getting additional AML funding to sit and complete that project. That's the only way I really do see moving forward with that is because the costs are so high, um, five to six million dollars for that next phase. So um, definitely need to work on that. Thank you. Candidates, thank you for your thoughtful answers to our questions. We now move to final statements. You'll have three minutes, and we'll start with David Thompson. Thank you. Uh, as we have no doubt learned here today, no one person will exactly match uh, your ideology, your philosophy. I mean, we're, we're all pretty close up here. I, I don't think anybody went too radical on you guys tonight. Uh, but some people whom I consider great friends still have differing opinion, differing opinions from me, yet I still call them friend and sometimes family, and that's to my daughter back there. Uh, I urge everybody to continue reaching out uh, to the candidates, ask them the questions, uh, find out who would best, best represent your issues on issues that you care about. Uh, one of the things is I've never been this nervous at a job, inter uh, job interview before, and I've had some big job interviews. Uh, I urge everyone to get and vote in the primary and the general, this is the greatest power we have. You guys get to decide which one of us gets to represent you full time. Uh, but the big thing I ask that we also rep respect each other's opinions, treat each other with dignity. Uh, when we start uh, attacking and personal attacks, it just devolves into chaos. Uh, we must be informed and educated when it comes to our individual individual rights and our responsibilities, and we're all responsible for it, not just us sitting up here, but to a certain extent, you folks up there, you're the ones that are getting to decide which one of us sits on the council, so we all share the responsibility. Thank you. 
Daniel, <clears throat> Daniel Pedri, three minutes for a final statement. Thank you. Well, we've had a lot of great discussion tonight and addressed a lot of important issues. And the thing that stands out to me the most is that even if we disagree on the path to get there, we all have a desire to improve Rock Springs. And that is certainly the case for me. I want to serve not in a way that tells people what to do, but in a way that works with people. And that includes all of you. And we can find the solutions together. And Rock Springs has been through good and bad times, and there's more of both of that to come. And whether we're booming or busting, we deserve public servants who are de dedicated to working towards long-term vision for our future that can withstand both the ups and the downs and the opportunities and the challenges. And I do have the experience and the background to be a meaning contributor, meaningful contributor to that effort. Uh, growing up, I was lucky enough to be surrounded by hardworking people, the kind of men and women that didn't finish until the job was done and it was done right. And I believe that most of you guys can agree that you had similar upbringings. And that is what makes Rock Springs Rock Springs. And when the times get tough, we don't back down. We actually double down. And that means a lot to me. And I strive to have that reflected in my work, my parenting, and someday, hopefully soon, as your city councilor. So if you guys have any questions, any ideas, please reach out to me. And when you guys vote in August and in November, please vote for me, and I will do my best to, to make sure your voice is heard at City Hall. Thanks. Randy Hansen, your three-minute final statement. Um. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. I appreciate you for being the moderator tonight. I think uh, it's gone really, really well. I promise I'll keep it short, uh, but I wanted to say a few thank yous. One to Mr. Rick Lee and the Rock Springs Chamber of Commerce for putting on this event. Also his staff for all the stuff that they've done. Um, the, the venue here, the, the Broadway Theater, I remember coming here as a uh, uh, as, as when it was a movie theater and to see the changes in here it's just amazing as far as how wonderful uh, this venue is. I'd also like to take a moment to publicly thank my wife Misty, my friends and family and others for helping me with the decision to run and the ongoing support and encouragement uh, in my campaign. I want to I want to be sure to tell everybody that I believe the future uh, is about hope and prosperity. I'd like to say that I believe the future looks bright for the people of Rock Springs and the uh, uh, state of Wyoming and also for the people of Ward 4. Both as candidates serve them well. The people of Ward 4 can be proud of either of us. I think uh, myself or Eric both would be a very good um, uh, councilman for the uh, city of Rock Springs. I believe that I'd be the best representative. Um, I know a lot of you and you know me. <laughs> Over the past 40 years, I've actively been involved with the community, you and your families. I've been associated with the Young at Heart Senior Center for 15 to 20 years, meeting, interacting, and becoming friends with, with them, and listening to a lot of their concerns. A lot of them being your parents, your grandparents, your aunts and uncles. As a police officer, I've driven uh, and patrolled your streets and alleys, uh, both day and night, trying to keep you safe. I've talked with a lot of you. I've uh, I've likely been to your homes even, um, both in good times and unfortunately sometimes in bad. I've always tried to treat it, people with dignity and respect. During my years as a restaurant manager and a supervisor for the Rock Springs Police Department, I've always tried to work under the premise of three words, fair, honest, and consistent. Um, I always try to go back to those three words of fair, honest, and consistent when I have difficult decisions to make. I think as a councilman, if I can stick with that premise, I think that will, will follow me along and help me with the hard decisions uh, that the councilman would have to make. Finally, I'm proud to be a candidate for the city uh, county seat, and I can't wait to get to work for the people of Ward 4 as the voice of Ward 4. Again, I kindly ask for your vote in the upcoming primary, as well as the general election in November. Thank you. Last, but certainly not least, Eric Bingham, your final statement, please. Thank you. I did offer to Mr. Randy Hansen that he, if you could put a, a yard sign of mine in your yard. <laughs> and he said, well, as long as I can put one in your yard, right? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everyone, and uh, thank you for being here on a Friday night. Um, and.
being here to listen to us. And again, thank you, Rick Lee, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, Wild 4 News. Tom Ellis, thank you so much for moderating. Always enjoyed our discussions, too, on Wild Radio. So um, I guess I had a whole speech prepared, but I think what I'm going to do is just go off script here and just say that what drove me really um, to file was, you know, one thing that we have amazing here is the open spaces. And I always tell people, like, within five minutes, you can drive anywhere and create your own adventure. And you can't do that in a place where I grew up where there's over a million people. We should be very proud of where we live. I am. And um, just all the opportunities that are here. Um, when I'm walk either walking my dog downtown, which my dog has decided that he is a downtown dog now. He doesn't like go hiking in the hills anymore. But he turns and he goes right down <laughs> to the downtown area. And not sure what that means, but um, when I walk around there, I just see all the great opportunities uh, that, that we could do downtown uh, would be a great thing. So I just feel so strongly uh, with all the industry and the revenue shortages and things like that, that's what drove me to file because I know I work in economic development. We have incredible momentum going right now. Uh, just like I said recently with the recent uh, recruitment expansion of the Caltech, uh, such a great success for us here in Sweetwater County. And so many people were involved. And, and I think another thing that's important as moving forward, whether I win or I don't win and Randy wins, um, that the city council continues working with the county and the city of Green River because working regionally together really is the key to moving forward. So I look forward to your vote uh, at the primary, uh, although we are both moving, all of us are moving on to the general election. Thank you to the people, uh, the further candidates. Um, very enjoyed the very civil discussion up here and sharing of opinions. And so I look forward to, again, Randy, um, I think you would be a great candidate, but I think I'd make it better. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, let's have a round of applause for our candidates. Tom? So this is the continuation of Tom Allen's letter. He says, while I'm sure that you would love to hear Rick drone on and on with my ideas, I just have a few more thoughts to leave with you. As far as today, as far a, as day-to-day -day living and working in our wonderful city, should I be elected, there are several concerns that I would like to address. Flood control on the north and west side of Ward 2, this includes, the most, this includes mostly the area around the elementary school on Sage Coach and all along Summit Drive. I would like to improve the communication between the city and the school district to help ensure what happened last summer does not happen again. Additionally, it's important that we talk about the weeds, the fencing that has popped up since last summer, uh, the weeds that, uh, along the fencing that has popped up since last summer's flooding. I would also like to take a look at the fence around the drainage ditch around uh, along Summit Ro Boulevard. My wife and I have visited many cities and towns with similar drainage issues that do not have this prison-like fencing. Finally, I have spoken to many people that have complained about zoning and compliance issues with the city. Why can't we have more housing for seniors and others that would like to have accessible and comfortable residences? Currently, it is almost impossible to develop duplexes or multi-unit senior living due to zoning. This is an issue for families with aging parents or people that would like to downsize to smaller homes. I'm sure that we can develop a solution to this by working with planning and zoning, developers and other stakeholders that would like to see this type of housing become available. I've lived in Rock Springs for over 30 years. My wife was raised here and graduated from Rock Springs High School. Our two boys were born here and graduated high school in Rock Springs. We have owned and operated several successful businesses and would like to see continued progress in this wonderful city. In an effort to not bore the audience any further, I will end my statement by saying we live in a wonderful city that can be made even better and more prosperous with a little imagination and a lot of work by all of us. Thanks again for this opportunity, and especially to Rick and the Chamber for providing this important event for all the candidates. All the best, Thomas Tom Allen. Okay, on behalf of the Rock Springs Chamber of Commerce, YO Radio, YO4 News, and our candidates, thanks to the people here in the Broadway Theater who came out tonight for this debate, and also those folks tuning in on our Facebook page. My name is Tom Ellis, your moderator for tonight's debate. Next Tuesday is primary election day here in Sweetwater County and around the state of Wyoming. 
I would encourage everyone to exercise their privilege to vote by showing up at the polls. From the Broadway Theater, downtown Rock Springs, this is Tom Ellis saying good night to everyone.